Hi, prepare yourself because today we're going to check whether the theory is according to the experimental device. So here is the thing. In, in other videos, we talk about this kind of system, okay, this dynamic system in which we move the object, uh, the objects, uh, capital M and small m, we move it by using gravity. Okay, and we did the solution. You can check it in the other video. So what I just did is just to have some values from an experimental device that uh, it's gonna give me a value of the acceleration. So the acceleration for this system is going to be this uh, equation here that it's small m divided the sum of the masses times g. So if I have these values, for small m, capital M, and g, acceleration of gravity, we're going to have this acceleration. So the question is, how, how you can check in an experimental device if it's possible or that you have the appropriate data and the appropriate results, okay? So first, as this system is accelerated with constant acceleration, it is expected that the position of the object change following this equation. Okay? So when you have um, a constant acceleration, this is the equation that follows for position as a function of time. Okay? dA stands for the acceleration. DU stands for the initial speed, for the initial velocity, and S sub zero stands for the initial position. So imagine that you did the experiment and you have the way to determine time and position. So you can measure time and position for this device that you have here. So you measure the position of this mass and the time. And this is what I did in, in a lab, and in the lab I got these values, okay, time and position. But look at that, I have many values, so first I have to filter the data. So to filter the data I have two options. First, when I'm doing the, the graph, check in which part of the graph is showing me an accelerated motion, I mean, in which part of the graph I can see this relation here, this relation. So let's do the graph. Let's do the graph. So graph. <coughs> <coughs> so this is the graph we're going to do, right? Okay, this is the graph. Let me move the graph here up. And we'll see. How it works. Okay, so look at that, this part of the graph that you have here. It's not, it's like um, a horizontal line. So it, it's something that happens after you did the accelerated motion. So as the measurement of position, the way you measure position, it's going to take all the time, not only the accelerated motion. So what's going to happen is that after the motion, it's going to take this, this position here. So this, this data is going to be discarded. Okay? So about 1.80 is going to be discarded. And here, this data here is not allowed because kind of the same deal is when you, you're not moving the object. The object is moving here, like from 1.20 to 1.80. Okay, so if we like approximate better, we can see that. I did it before, so that's what I know. What is the time I need? Okay, but if you're going to do it, please check it like with close hand to have your graph. 
So we're going to do the graph from 1.20 to 1.8. Okay, that is the time in which we have the accelerated motion. Accelerated motion. Okay. Look that we have the way the form of a quadratic function. I mean, this type of function. Okay. So the first thing that I do was to filter the information. The first thing that I did was to filter the information because I just need the part in which you have the accelerated motion. Now we're going to use Excel to have the trend line. Using the trend line, we're going to get if it's possible or not to have the acceleration. So we're going to use the trend line option. So trend line option. As I'm looking for a polynomial, look at this is a polynomial of second degree. Okay, this is a polynomial of second degree. So, we're going to have the line, second degree, equation, coefficient, and done. Lock. So, this is what we have. So, what we have is that the graph, it's according to 0.9999. So, this relation is quite close to the actual graph. So, look at If your equation... If the R square of your trend line is close to 1, okay, let's say that R square is greater than 0 0.9, so we can say that the equation fits with the data. But if it's less than 0 0.9, so it's better to say that the equation does not fit with the data. Okay, so maybe you have two problems. First, you didn't filter appropriately, so go and filter again. Or when you took the measurements, you didn't get the the result that you expected. Okay, you did something odd, something wrong. Okay, so now as is 0.99, so I can say that this data is actually, or this function is actually according to our data so I can tell what is the acceleration of the system, okay? And how could I tell the acceleration of the system? Easy peasy. The first coefficient is with x squared. Remember that this uh, axis represents time. So the first coefficient represents the coefficient that multiplies t squared. Okay, first coefficient represents the term that multiplies a squared. So if I wrote this as a half of a t squared plus u t plus s sub zero, and now my equation is 1.94 or 95 so f x this is the math 1.95 t square plus minus 4.66 t plus 2.79 so what do I have here? I have kind of the same equation although this is with x but it's a math function so it doesn't matter the coefficients should be correlated okay notice for example that even that I feel that I start with zero speed Maybe I'm giving an initial speed and I don't I didn't notice that. And okay, the position it depends on how you did the measurement. But the important fact here is that the acceleration comes from here. So according to these two factors, I can tell that a half of the acceleration is equal to 
1.95, okay? First factor that it has the x squared in the trend line, it's going to be half of the acceleration. So I can tell that the acceleration is just 2 times 1.95, okay? Let's see if it works. 2 times 5, 10. 2 times 9, 18. 2 times 9, 18, and 1, 19, and 2 times 1, 2, and 1, 3. Okay, so I got 3.9. My acceleration is 3.9. So maybe, maybe you're thinking, okay, I didn't get the, the result. The result is 4.6 meters per square second, and here I get... 3.9 meters per second, okay? I forgot to put the units, that's very important. Meters per square second. Okay, I didn't get the result. But actually, look at that, there are many factors that maybe you didn't, you didn't apply in the experiment that makes the error. So the actual error is of 0.5, so the error in the acceleration is the 0.5 meters per square second. That is due to measurement mistakes. Okay? Measurements. Or uncertainties. Uncertainties that it's good for you to discuss because you know your laboratory, you know how you did it, you know how to measure, so you can describe why you have an 0.5 distance in meters per square second between the theoretical acceleration and the other acceleration. And maybe you can think of another things you can do to improve the measurement, and improving the measurement, you can get the actual acceleration. Let me give you an example. If you, get, if you did an excellent work, this number should be very small. Because you took the data exactly when the car starts the motion, okay? So this is how you can process data when you have a theoretical factor that is g, that is the acceleration here, theoretical acceleration, and you have the data and using the trend line op option of Excel, first filter the data using the graph, then use the trend line option to have the equation, and using r square to tell that your graph is appropriate to work, so get the value of the acceleration. So I hope that you enjoyed the video, that you learned something about it, and in another video I can tell you other stuff about measuring, but in this case I hope that you learn how to do the process of checking a theoretical value of acceleration with an experimental value of acceleration. Have a nice day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.